the R video tutorial on agent based models part 12. Okay, now we can actually use this model. I know it's been a long time, but some of these last series of videos, it's taken a long time to get through them. Uh, especially like splines and this one. These are really complicated models. And learning how to use these models takes a lot of programming experience. And hopefully as you're going along here, you're seeing how things were put together and hopefully seeing some of the logic. We put everything together that we need right now. Now we can start playing with the model and you start tuning it. Now, the reason we made this parameters here is this is how we tune it. Okay? Uh, everything is put here in terms of all the parameters that we can play with or that we'd want to play with, and we can see how they work. So I'm going to copy these, and I'm going to move these down to the bottom okay, where I ran the model before. So here I have my starting values. I have my parameter values, and then I have my model. So what I'm going to call this is model 1. If I can type it correctly. And what this is going to do is it's going to give me an output that has all of these on it, which then I can plot. Okay. Now I've ran all of this already. So if I just take what I currently have and run it, I can now begin to plot this stuff. Okay. Um, Let's see here. What do I need to do to make this work? Well, I need to know what end time one is. So let's do plot. Um, let's see here. We're going to go from one to 15 because that's end time one. And then model one has all of my outputs on it. So I can put S on here. So I can do type equals L. And here I can make the color equals, uh, I think we did purple before for susceptible because that's who we're looking at. And if I run this bit, you can see our plot that comes up. Okay, this is the picture that we have. We started off with 100 people and notice how quickly they all became infected. And that's because of our parameters here that we've been playing with. And we can change the model however we want as we go along. So I can do lines. I'm going to add all of them on here so that I have all of my uh, pieces here. So model one, dollar sign, E, and I think we made them red last time. If you watch the one where we talked about compartmental models, 1 through 15, model 1, dollar sign I. Um, maybe these were red, and we made those orange. I think that's right. So these should be orange. And here the color equals red. And here lines 1 through 15, model 1, dollar sign recovered. Recovered, I think we made green or sea green. And then we also have uh, here lines 1 through 15, model 1, dollar sign D, and we made those equal to black. Okay, I've ran all of this. That means I can look at the picture, and this is what I see. Um, and some of it is it doesn't go all the way up to 100, which it should, because remember, when I start off, I purposely made some of the people, at least seven of them, something else. So I'm going to change the limits on this just to make the picture look a little bit better. Uh, so here I'm going to do or y lim equals c0 100. Um, that's just for this picture. If I were to make it bigger, this number has to match this number. So if I And I can rerun this, and you can see what the pictures look like. Okay, so here's the picture one time, here's the picture another time, here's the picture another time. And the reason they look different is they have randomness in it, okay? And that allows us to do some uncertainty quantification. We can get bands around things for certain people and certain groups. But the point is, is don't expect it to be exactly the same for everybody every single time, okay? So when you're doing this, don't expect everything to be exactly the same every time. Also remember that... It, this does not have our first state in it. When we run this through, we only record the answer at the end. So if you want to add people where they started at the beginning in, you'll have to add that in. But look how quick things happen. And then you can come up here and simply change uh, these numbers and see how it changes the picture. And that's why we tried to uh, set it up this way We can with functions. 
Okay, now look, it took a lot longer, and the people only met with five people, which in some countries they have that. No groups bigger than five. That's one example. And we can change uh, what's susceptible to exposed, right? How, how likely are they to become exposed? And you can see how these things change, and maybe it's much less likely that they die. And the beautiful thing about this is none of these have to add up to one, right? You can play with them however. Uh, now, as we go along here, notice uh, we don't have people who go from um, exposed to recovered because we said it took 14 days. And notice we only ran this out for 15 days. But what we can do is we can easily change that. We could go to 25 if we wanted to. And um, it's pretty easy to do here. And we can run it farther out and we can see what things look like. Okay, notice the recoveries take off here once we run it a little bit farther out. And this is a bit interesting. And it's pretty easy to play with this model. And now it runs pretty quick because we vectorized a lot of the functions in it. We can make it a thousand. We can see what it looks like with a thousand, which should be a scale up of what the other one was. But notice it takes a bit longer to run a thousand of these. But you get another picture and everything looks good. So now in the next video, that's what we're going to want to do is learn how to sort of interrogate the model to help us make decisions and help us understand what's going on. And we'll do that in the next video.